Welcome back. This video is part of a YouTube playlist on Google Classroom. And today we're going to dive into the heart of our Google Classroom, which is creating assignments. Google Classroom is a learning management system, so it's very important that we know how to assign assignments in Google Classroom. So we're going to cover everything you need to know to set your students up for success and save yourself some time. Now in the last video, we created topics. And I'm gonna scroll down because I created this math games topic. And we are gonna be adding assignments to our math game section of our Google Classroom today. So I'm gonna go up here to create. This is where we created our topic last in the last video. And when you click on create, you'll notice that the very first option is assignment. So we're gonna click on assignment. I'll go over Cami assignments in another video. All right, so we have all of these things that we have to add to our assignment. The very first thing is our title. So the title of your assignment does matter. So you wanna give your assignment a clear and descriptive title. So mine is Multiplication Madness. You know how much I love emojis, so I'm going to right click, click emojis, and let me type in multiplication, there we go. So, multiplication madness. That's not very exciting, but we're gonna go with it. The next thing are instructions, which it says is optional. I'm saying it's not optional. You wanna spend a few extra minutes crafting detailed instructions. So this is the math games portion of my Google Classroom. So instead of just telling my students, hey, you have free time on the Chromebook, I'm gonna say, go to the math game section of the Google Classroom and choose one of the math games that you want to use. Do you want to do you want to practice multiplication or I could add one on on addition, that kind of thing. So that's my um, thought behind this. So my instructions are so for this example, I'm going to add two links that will take the students to uh, multiplication games. So if I scroll down here to the bottom, I'm going to start here at the end. I'll go over all of these other things too. So right here is a link and I'm going to click this and then I'm going to go over to my game. So here's sticky tables and I'm going to copy this URL. So I have this URL here. I'm going to copy it go back to my Google Classroom and I'm gonna paste it here and then add the link. So as I said, I have two links that I want to add. So I'm gonna click this link here and I'm going to add Cannonball and copy that game, copy and paste. So there's the two websites that they can go to. I am going to talk about practice sets and YouTube in another video. So you could upload, and mainly when it says upload, that means something from your computer drive. So I'm on a Windows computer, so this would be like I could grab something from my H drive. Um, but you'll also notice it does have your Google Drive on here too. When you add something that is shared with you, it will force you to make a copy. So just be aware of that. You can still do it. It'll just force you to make a copy. So practice sets in YouTube, those are new. I'm going to cover those in another video. I actually have two videos on practice sets. So I'm going to go over here. I'm working my way backwards. I'm gonna to go to create. So what this means is I can create a Google Doc, a slideshow, a Google Sheet, a drawing, or a Google Form on the fly. So let's say I'm like, you know what? I'd like them to do some kind of a reflection to let me know, did they pick sticky tables or did they pick the cannonball game? And let me know what they thought. Just something real quick that they have to fill out. So I could go into Docs, it would create a doc, it's gonna open it up in another tab. I could name it, 
multiplication, multiplication, reflection, and put in my questions that I have. And then I'm going to go back to the tab that has classwork. It's going to show untitled, even though I did title it, but the students will see that it's, they'll see the title. It just hasn't refreshed yet. Um, and then right here, notice that the default is students can only view. And that kind of saves you because I'd rather have the default be students can view instead of students can edit, just in case, <laughs> you know, um, it sort of saves you. But for this example, I want the students, I want each individual student to go in and tell me which one did they do? Did they do sticky tables or did they do cannonball? And then tell me how that, what they learned, what they liked about it, what they didn't like about it. So I need to go down here to the bottom where it's make a copy for each student. And what that will do is it will, well, obviously it'll make a copy for each student, but it'll also rename the document to be Sarah Hoffman multiplication reflection. So it'll put the student's name in front of the name of the document. So it's pretty slick. So that's how you can create on the fly. And I'm gonna skip over YouTube, but I can also go to my Google Drive. And when you click on that, it's got recent, upload, my drive, shared drive, starred, and shared with me. So what I wanna do is I want to search. It has the word reflection. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that. All right, and the first thing that popped up is this multiplication reflection that I just did. Um, and But I am going to go to, there we go. So if I hover over it, I can see the full title of the document. So this is the one that I want. I want three, two, one reflection. Once again, I want students to be, I want to make a copy for each student. So this way they have three things that they have to do. Now, I need to go back in here to my directions and add the fact that they need to um, complete the um, reflection. All right, so I have my title, my instructions. I've added my two options, and I would add that in the directions to pick one of the two. And then um, I have the three to one reflection that they are going to complete. I'm gonna delete this one because they don't have to do that one. Over here on the right-hand side um, are some very important things I wanna go over. The first thing is you get to decide what class is this for? Is this just for your first period class or are you creating this multiplication madness option for all of your classes? So you can go in here and you can select another class that it's going to go into. I'm gonna select these three classes. The next thing you see is a due date. Due dates are key, avoid confusion add a due date. So I'm gonna give them some time to get this done. You can put a time if you would like to. So you'll see that you have the option to close submission after due date, and that will just stop students from being able to submit the assignment. So I'm gonna do that. Down here, topics, I want this to go under math games. If you are creating an assignment and you're like, oh no, I forgot to create the topic. You can do it right here. So you, it says right here, create topic. If you don't create a topic, it will just float at the top of your classwork page. So down here we talk about grading and this is the grading categories. We went over how to set your grading ca categories in the video on Google Classroom settings. So be sure to check that out. So because I have this set, I'm gonna do it as homework and it will automatically change this to 10 points. Because I set my grading period, it's automatically setting this assignment as first quarter because Friday, August 30th is within the first quarter range. Rubrics, we will go over in another video.
One of the really nice features of Google Classroom is that you can schedule assignments to go out to the student. So I have all the work done for this assignment, but I don't want it to go out until class, until school starts, because I don't want the kids to get in there and start working on it. So I'm gonna go up here to assign. If I just click assign, it's out there. All the students can see it. But there's a little shark tooth next to the word assign. And remember, whenever you see a shark tooth, click on it, because there's hidden options underneath there. So I'm gonna click on it, and I have schedule. So now as you can see, I have this window pops up and it asks when I wanna publish, when the due date is, what the topic is, and what the grading period is for each class. So the first one is my practice class. I'm gonna have the publish date as the 19th and I want it to go at 8 a.m. So the reason I want it to go to 8 a.m. is because I have three classes, first period, second period, third period. I want this one to go at 8 a.m. when first period is, and then the second class, I will choose 9 a.m. The due date I already have set. I already have the topic set. The grading period is first quarter. The next one, the publish date for this is same thing, the 19th but I'm gonna change this to 9 a.m. The due date is still gonna be the 19th. And then I wanna close the submission. Whoop, close the submission. I wanna add, I want it to go under math games and then first quarter already popped up. I'm gonna scroll down to this class Publish date, um, why can't I see that? So I don't want it to be tomorrow. <laughs> Let me try that again, here we go. I want that 19th and then I want it at 10 a.m. So I've got 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and then 10 a.m. So first period, second period, third period. The due date is the same for everyone, the 30th, oops, I want this one to be the 30th, not the 19th, silly. There we go, 30th, 30th, 30th. The only thing that's different in when it's going to show up for the student is the 10, is the 8, 9, and 10. Math game, math game, math game, oop, I almost forgot. First quarter, first quarter, first quarter. Perfect. Now, copy to all settings, that would override and that would actually take everything that I have for the practice class and copy it to all of the other classes. But I don't wanna do that because there's a, just a little subtle difference. And then you click schedule. Notice the contrast between multiplication madness and forms because that one was already posted. It's grayed out because it's scheduled for August 19th. Anytime that you need to change a draft or scheduled assignment, you just go into the skinny snowman here and select edit. So if you need to add any more instruction or if you need to change the due date, you can. If you need to change when you want it to go out for the students, there's a little shark tooth right here and you can change the date or you can just exit out of that and start all over. I did want to show you how Google Classroom allows you to select specific students for an assignment. So the default is to go out to your entire class. If I click on this, you notice I have two students in here. I can just have it go out to Gabby. And I can click assign. And then that, oop, this assignment published date is outside the selected grading. So this is warning me that my first quarter doesn't start until it doesn't start today. So it's warning me. So I am actually going to click schedule. So thank you, Google. And I'm going to schedule this to go out the 19th. You can also save any assignment as a draft. 
So if you're not sure when you want to send it out to your students, you can simply select save as draft. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna click on the skinny snowman. Sorry, there's a motorcycle driving by <laughs> in my neighborhood. All right, skinny snowman, I'm gonna go to edit and I'm gonna exit off of the schedule because I'm like, you know what? I stuff has come up I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to assign this multiplication madness I'm going to click the the X and I'm just going to go to the shark tooth and do save draft so now it's going to exit out and it just says draft so now I'm like when I get back I'll go in I'll edit it and then I'll push it out to the students right away or I'll schedule it so that saving it as a draft is a nice option. So that covers how to create an assignment. We covered a lot with this video, so I hope it was helpful. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more Google Classroom tips and tricks. If you did find this helpful, feel free to leave a comment in the comments below and then check out the description for a link to our entire Google Classroom playlist. Have a wonderful day.